our tutorial random forest regression. Supervised machine learning consists of finding which class output target data belongs to or predicting its value by mapping its optimal relationship with input predictors data. Main supervised learning tasks are classification and regression. This topic is part of regression machine learning with our curves. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Random forest regression consists of supervised learning meta-algorithm for predicting output target feature average by bootstrap aggregation or bagging of independently built decision trees. Bootstrap aggregation or bagging is used for lowering variance error source of independently built decision trees. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bryman, Random Forests, published in Machine Learning in 2001. Classification and regression trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through sum of square errors function at each stage. As a formula, we have the minimization of sum of square errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. Terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations in terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature data. Tree bagging algorithm consists of predicting output target feature of independently built decision trees by calculating their arithmetic mean. For random forest, a combination of random feature selection and bootstrap aggregation or bagging algorithms is used. Bootstrap consists of random sampling with replacement. As a formula, independently built decision trees mean output target feature prediction is equal to 1 divided by k, k is the number of independently built decision trees, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the independently built decision trees output target feature prediction. Great, so let's go into R Studio so that we can study random forest regression with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within R Studio. The first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. This is done with the library function and within it the package name. So for this tutorial we'll be using quantmod and random forest. So we select these two code lines, then we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The next step is to create data for random forest regression. This is done through data reading. So we create this variable, which is data, and it's equal to read.csv. And within it, we have the name of the data file, random forest regression data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values stored within the working directory, comma header equals to true. So we select the code line, click run or control enter on the keyboard. And notice that within the global environment, it created a data object as a data frame. So we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, and that opens a data object, which has two columns, dates with a daily frequency and SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the standard and poor 500 index and adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So as mentioned, this data has a daily frequency and it's from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore nine years of data. So the following step is we are going to create an XTS or extensible time series. We are going to name it SPY and it's equal to XTS. And from data, we're going to select the second column with those SPY adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And we're going to order by equals as date, data the first column. So we select that code line, 
click run or control enter on the keyboard which is equivalent. And notice that this created the second object named SPY now as an XTS or extensible time series. So again we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon and it opens SPY for us and as we can see it's the same data but now the dates became the index. So after doing data reading, now we're going to create a target and predictor features for the random forest regression. So first we have the target feature, which we're going to name RSPY because it will correspond to its arithmetic return. So we have daily return, capital R, of SPY. So this will calculate the arithmetic rate of return of those SPY adjusted close prices. And then we have as predictor feature RSPY1, and we'll be using as unique predictor feature previous days returns. So we're going to lag the previous calculation and the number of positions we're doing the lag is for one position. We bring both of this together into one data frame, which we're going to name RSPY all, and we do so with C bind or column bind of RSPY, which is a target feature and RSPY one, which is a predictor feature. We rename their corresponding columns with call names and the variable names within C that's columns. And the last step is, as this corresponding lagging of those daily returns, we have a non-available at the first row. We're going to remove that first row for both of these columns. And we do so with NA exclude for this RSPY all, and we overwrite it. So we select all these code lines, then we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. So now that we have our data ready, together with target and predictor features, we continue to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range is commonly used for algorithm training and testing range for algorithm testing for evaluating its forecasting accuracy. So we create first of all training range which is RSVYT and then testing range which is RSVYF, F to distinguish it with the T. We'll be using window function for RSPY all and the training range is going to be from the beginning of the time series, which is the beginning of 2007, and it's going to end at the beginning of 2014. Therefore, we'll be using the first seven years of data as our training range. And then for the testing range, also from that RSPY all, but in this case, it's going to start at the beginning of 2014. So it's going to go all the way to the end of 2015. Therefore, the last two years of data as a testing range. Notice that this training and testing range delimiting was only included for educational purposes as an example, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we select these two code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard. Within this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So now that we have our training and testing range at the limiting ready, we can continue to do random forest regression. So we create this variable, which is going to be named RF for random forest T because we're doing the calculation within the training range. And we'll be using random forest function with capital F. And here we have the formula for the regression in which we have the target feature RSPY explained by the predictor feature RSPY1 or current day returns explained by previous days returns data are SPYT, the one within the train range, and then specifications for the random forest. Number of trees, two, node size equals to two, meaning that each of these two trees will only have two terminal nodes. MTY equals to one, that's the number of predictor features used for the random forest, so in this case we only have one, so we'll be using that predictor feature. Notice that this was only included to show one of the parameters of this random forest and replace equals to true for the corresponding bootstrap to be done with replacement. Two very important observations regarding these parameters. First of all is that they are not fixed. They were only included as an educational example. Therefore, they can be modified according to your needs. And also very importantly, you might obtain different results when doing your own random forest regression because of the bootstrap and the random seed used within its calculation. And the following step after doing the calculation of that random forest regression is to visualize it within a chart with plot of the previously created RFT. So we select these two code lines, we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. Excellent. So right here we have the chart, so we're going to zoom into it. And we have RFT, random forest regression within the training range. Right here we have on the vertical axis the corresponding 
mean square error and on the horizontal one the corresponding number of trees so here we have one tree up to two trees so as we can see in this example as mentioned you might obtain different results when doing your own random forest regression because of the bootstrap random seed in this case we have the relationship that as the number of trees increased the corresponding mean square error also increased so we're going to close that chart there and now that we finished studying random forest regression let's go back into the slides And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.